This is section 101 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. About London by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at a dinner given by the Savage Club, London, September 28, 1872. Reported by Moncure D. Conway in the Cincinnati Commercial. It affords me sincere pleasure to meet this distinguished club, a club which has extended its hospitalities and its cordial welcome to so many of my countrymen. I hope, and here the speaker's voice became low and fluttering, you will excuse these clothes. I am going to the theater. <laughs> that will explain these clothes. I have other clothes than these. <laughs> judging human nature by what i have seen of it i suppose that the customary thing for a stranger to do when he stands here is to make a pun on the name of this club under the impression of course that he is the first man that that idea has occurred to it is a credit to our human nature not a blemish upon it for it shows that underlying all our depravity, and God knows and you know we are depraved enough, and all our sophistication, and untarnished by them, there is a sweet germ of innocence and simplicity still. When a stranger says to me, with a glow of inspiration in his eye, some gentle, innocuous little thing about twain and one flesh and all that sort of thing i don't try to crush that man into the earth no i feel like saying let me take you by the hand sir let me embrace you i have not heard that pun for weeks we will deal in palpable puns we will call parties named king your majesty and we will say to the smiths that we think we have heard that name before somewhere such is human nature we cannot alter this it is god that made us so for some good and wise purpose let us not repine but though i may seem strange may seem eccentric i mean to refrain from punning upon the name of this club though i could make a very good one if i had time to think about it a week i cannot express to you what entire enjoyment i find in this first visit to this prodigious metropolis of yours its wonders seem to me to be limitless i go about as in a dream as in a realm of enchantment where many things are rare and beautiful and all things are strange and marvelous hour after hour i stand i stand spellbound as it were and gaze upon the statuary in leicester square leicester square being a horrible chaos with the relic of an equestrian statue in the center the king being headless and limbless and the horse in little better condition i visit the mortuary effigies of noble old henry the eighth and judge jeffreys and the preserved gorilla and try to make up my mind which of my ancestors i admire the most i go to that matchless hyde park and drive all around it and then i start to enter it at the marble arch and am induced to change my mind cabs are not permitted in hyde park nothing less aristocratic than a private carriage it is a great benefaction is hyde park there in his handsome cab the invalid can go the poor sad child of misfortune and insert his nose between the railings and breathe the pure health-giving air of the country and of heaven and if he is a swell invalid who isn't obliged to depend upon parks for his country air 
he can drive inside if he owns his vehicle i drive round and round hyde park and the more i see of the edges of it the more grateful i am that the margin is extensive and i have been to the zoological gardens what a wonderful place that is i never have seen such a curious and interesting variety of wild animals in any garden before except mabelly i never believed before there were so many different kinds of animals in the world as you can find there and i don't believe it yet i have been to the british museum i would advise you to drop in there some time when you have nothing to do for five minutes if you have never been there it seems to me the noblest monument that this nation has yet erected to her greatness i say to her our greatness as a nation true she has built other monuments and stately ones as well but these she has uplifted in honor of two or three colossal demigods who have stalked across the world stage destroying tyrants and delivering nations and whose prodigies will still live in the memories of men ages after their monuments shall have crumbled to dust i refer to the wellington and nelson monuments and the albert memorial sarcasm the albert memorial is the finest monument in the world and celebrates the existence of as commonplace a person as good luck ever lifted out of obscurity the library at the british museum i find particularly astounding i have read there hours together and hardly made an impression on it i revere that library it is the author's friend i don't care how mean a book is it always takes one copy a copy of every book printed in great britain must by law be sent to the british museum a law much complained of by publishers and then every day that author goes there to gaze at that book and is encouraged to go on in the good work and what a touching sight it is of a saturday morning to see the poor careworn clergymen gathered together in that vast reading-room cabbaging sermons for sunday you will pardon my referring to these things everything in this monster city interests me and i cannot keep from talking even at the risk of being instructive people here seem always to express distances by parables to a stranger it is just a little confusing to be so parabolic so to speak i collar a citizen and i think i am going to get some valuable information out of him i ask him how far it is to birmingham and he says it is twenty-one shillings and sixpence now we know that doesn't help a man who is trying to learn i find myself downtown somewhere and i want to get some sort of idea where i am being usually lost when alone and i stop a citizen and say how far is it to charing cross shilling fare in a cab and off he goes i suppose if i were to ask a londoner how far it is from the sublime to the ridiculous he would try to express it in coin but i am trespassing upon your time with these geological statistics and historical reflections i will not longer keep you from your orgies tis a real pleasure for me to be here and i thank you for it the name of the savage club is associated in my mind with the kindly interest and the friendly offices which you lavished upon an old friend of mine who came among you a stranger and you opened your english hearts to him and gave him welcome and a home artemus ward asking that you will join me i give you his memory end of about london by mark twain read by john greenman